Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. I know there is no voice. Now you can hear me. Is it clear? My voice clear? And do you see me clearly? Good. Great. Hi. How are you? How are you, everyone? Uh, maybe I'm, I'm like a new face to you. I know that. Like I've never taught you before. But um, I've been teaching the bachelor level okay the the um the undergraduate level and it's such an honor to get to know you guys and i hope we're gonna enjoy our time together and i don't know we exchange information i know a lot of people who applied for a master degree they're already like finished a lot of i don't know studying and they're experts in their field so we can exchange knowledge also so um, to get to know first, my name is Samara, and it's written here down if you can see it. Um, basically, I'm in charge of anything related to English and this university. Um, I'm one of the people who like, like I'm very proud when I'm saying it. Um, one of the people who got started building this place um, like two years ago. So. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm like, like from the beginning, I started this journey with the university, but with the um, undergraduate level. Now it's a great honor for me to deal with you guys who are studying um, masters. Um, when we had the idea to start this training, actually, I thought maybe 20 maximum 50 people would be interested. But when I opened the, the modal page, I was surprised. I have more than 300. And that's given me a, a huge responsibility. I have like to be very careful. <laughs> so um, before we start uh, um, uh, our course, I want to just get to tell you some instructions um, in case you're not following up our, um, our training course. Um, I'm going to try to share it with you here. So as you can see here, um, you have every Monday and Wednesday. I checked your schedule and this is the most suitable time for almost everyone, even me. Um, now, how you are going to get a certificate uh, of the training is that by uh, approving your attendance, and we're going to have a simple, uh, sorry, <clears throat> a simple quiz after we finish the, um, the lecture here. OK, it, it, it's very simple. It's about four questions. Actually, you're going to get it in Moodle um, uh, for 10 minutes. So you need to be careful. It's uh, the duration of it. It opens at 730 and closes at 830. And you have only 10 minutes to answer four questions. Four questions, very simple, very easy. Um, I'm not going to provide you with any marks, okay? It's not marks related. It is more than attendance related, okay? We want to prove that you really attend the lecture and you, you attend the quiz that is related to the lecture. So basically, you just attend one hour. It's less than one hour for me. I'm talking less, like maybe 40, 45 minutes. And then the last 15 to 20 minutes, I will give the mic to you guys. Um, if you have any discussion, if you have any question, I don't know, you want to share your ideas. As I told you, it's a matter of exchanging um, knowledge and experience here. And um, I'm showing it to you in Arabic, so we miss um any misunderstanding i don't want to be like misunderstood okay now the schedule of the lectures um we're going to start from today which is 4th of july and we're going to end before you have your final now next week i know we're going to have eid and everything so we're all going to have um a vacation and we are going to enjoy so no lectures next week okay um so these are the time now after uh, this is recorded. So when it's finished, I'm already going um, to upload it for you on Moodle also. Now I want to share with you a, where is it? A, okay, here we go. This is the Moodle page. Um, 
sorry, I need to sign in, I forgot. So, okay. So basically they add this course for me here, it's called English, it should be business English, not English business, but however. Now this is the, the link, okay? Every week we're gonna keep having the same link. So you just click on it and, the, and take you directly to me every Monday and Wednesday, as I told you. Now this is the quiz, okay? It's hidden now. Um, the password is agree as usual. Okay, the quiz duration is one hour only. So it starts at 7.30 and ends at 8.30. And you have only 10 minutes to answer for questions. As I told you, it's not a matter of marks related. It's more than attendance related. And if you did really um, did understand the, the, the lecture, um, we're going to get also uh, feedback from it. So up to now, are we okay? All the instructions are clear. Please prove that to me. I don't know, right, okay, yes, whatever you like. Okay, clear, good, good. Now, tell me if I'm, I don't know, talking a little bit fast so I can go slow down, okay? So let me know, or it's okay. Slower, huh? Good, okay, we don't have problem, okay. Sometimes when I like speak slowly, I don't know, I, I lose the idea. So excuse me for that. <laughs> okay, now the attendance, eight, 80, sorry, not eight, um, 85. I have 85. Um, people who are registered in this course, they are 300. So I'm expecting more. Now, until we start, um, one more thing also, as you can see, let me change the shared screen. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, yep, here. So, um, this is, uh, I'm also going to share it with you guys on Moodle, okay? It's actually different resources and different books. Um, I took the important stuff from it and I customized it according to your level and your needs. <clears throat> okay okay cool so let's just make everything clear now i'm not here to teach you grammar i'm not here to teach you is an r i'm not here to teach you oh let's do um this tense and let's learn this and one plus one equals two let's say here we're here more to have fun in business life, but in English language, not in Arabic language. I know like most of your materials are in English, but the teachers try to somehow help you with explaining stuff for you in Arabic. Now, I'm here to try to stop that thing, for me at least, and try to more focus on practicing English but in business field, not how to use English in a restaurant. Okay, for you guys, you're new to me. So I'm Iraqi, I'm in Iraq, and we keep having electricity off. So you're going to get used to me when I don't have electricity. It's going to take two minutes and then it's going to come back. So it's, it's okay. Now for people who has question, Try please to write it in a question and answer so it's not getting mixed with the chit chatting here on the side. And um, I can read them when I finish talking, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. Okay, so um, no lectures next week. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to be in vacation and you're going to be in vacation and we're going to enjoy our time during Eid um, next week and then we come back later. Um, so, yeah, I was saying that um, I'm here more focusing, here we go, um, here I'm, I'm, I'm focusing more on, I don't know, try to recall and refresh um, the, the vocabs that you know, the way that you talk about companies and stuff. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, let's start. So basically, um, in this training, I'm trying to focus more on the stuff like 
oh, everything related to, to business from ownership, who's, who's owning that business and how to do a startup. And we're going to take, we're going to go into details about starting up. Um, how can we buy and sell business? And what do we mean by that? And what are the necessary terms and vocabs for it? And everything about the structure of, of the um, corporations and human resources. So basically, I'm taking the general stuff related to business. Yeah, that's less than two minutes. I know. Yeah. So um, what do we mean by business ownership? So basically, um, I don't know if you guys own your own business or not, but Let's pay attention to these um, terms that I'm going to use, business ownership. So every business has its own structure, okay? Just like you're building a house. Okay, I have a house. Is it an apartment? Is it a small house? Is it a villa? What is it exactly? So just like the structure of your house is the same with the structure of your business. Now, there are different types, but all of them, have to have, we call it legal entity. So um, try to have, I don't know, type of a notebook next to you. If there is any vocab that you've never heard about it before, I would totally recommend that you write it down and try to find out what does that mean? Because this is the main idea of, of the course, to enhance your bank of vocabs. So uh, it should have um, um, a legal entity, regardless the structure of it, okay? And it, it depends on people who are establishing it, okay? And there are some of them, it's like a huge organization, massive, huge, I mean, organization trading on stock, stock exchanging, okay? Now, there are three key consideration you need to put it in your mind before you decide what type of structure you want to do for your business or you want to apply it on your business how big the venture is expected to grow okay so how big is your business the financial stuff is it very complicated do you have a huge capital or it's very small one that's again um the management the reporting uh, people who are involved, um, how much liability you need to, to have, how much do you own? All of these help you to build your own business and its structure. Now, there are types of that. Let's get to know them. Firstly, we have the small and simple, very small business, very simple business. Now, if you want to write examples for me in the chat, that would be great. So basically, it's owned by one person. So we call it soul or solo as a Latin word. It means one. So solo means one, even like sometimes when you say, oh, I'm, we don't say I'm traveling alone. I'm a solo traveler. So it means I'm traveling alone. I'm, I'm having my own business alone. So here, basically very little capital you don't need a lot of um you don't need a huge capital okay um sometimes it's it's one owner most of the time and uh, the the business steps is very little it's not that much you don't have to consider it cool nice okay so i told you like it's recalling your information but in a business in, in an english wise Okay, now we have something called private companies. This is more complex, okay? It's more complicated and it has a legal entity separated from its owner, okay? So we call it private. So it's set up and run and it's a private, it's, it's the, the legal entity of it separated from the owner or owners. Now, the, the company structure of it um, you have the owners, which are not usually personally liable for business debt. So whatever revenue comes from that business, it has to get back to the debt or whatever money you need to, to pay for. You're not paying from your own pocket, basically. And private companies are owned by shareholders. Okay, so these type of caps like shareholder, private company, owners, um, um, liable Okay, 
I wanted to focus on such vocabs and imagine I'm using it in a correct context. I'm putting it in a sentence here. I know all of you, you know this information, but just like I'm teaching you vocabularies and I'm putting um, in a comprehensive context. Okay. Um, and we have the public companies. These companies go public. It means it's very huge business. It's not a very small one. It's not something private and something small. No, it's big, okay? Um, they have many legal and, and, and financial um, reporting and applications, okay? So all the responsibilities comes after that, it becomes bigger. Now, the general public, the general public and other institution can, you can basically buy shares. And, um, you can go and buy these shares from these public um, companies. And the structure, definitely, yes, exactly. That's what I mean. The public company structure is good for major capital injection and allowing the business to expand. And we're going to see next what I mean by expanding this company and what's the difference between a global and multinational companies. Uh, companies, okay? Sometimes we use them in the same context, but there is a huge difference between them. We'll, we'll see them next. Now, the other type of business ownership is that um, multinationals, okay? And we have franchises and we have non-profit sector. So these three other types, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Now, the most common thing right now is the franchises thing. And the nonprofit is getting expanding more. Why? Because basically um, you don't have to pay taxes and stuff um, and or maybe even less taxes in different uh, countries and depends on the law that's um, uh, enforced there. So we're going to take these in more details. So basically now we're going to cover these six uh, structures. Now, if this is an advice for you, um, if you have your own business or you're planning to do. Now, there are a, like a list of things that it's recommended to do and not to do. Firstly, try to suggest a domain for it and try to Google for it before you start naming it and try to pronounce it loudly. See, when you're saying the, 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 the name, let's say, of your business, try to say it many times loudly. The most important thing is the way you're saying it, it has to be the same way that you're writing it, like spelling. So people would go and find your business much easier. Um, try, try to be descriptive. Don't name something um, not related to the product. It has, the name has to show what do you mean by uh, your business or what, are, what type of services do you apply for? Or are you like introducing to people? So this is what I mean by be descriptive. And keep it short. Don't make it very long. Now try to avoid um, having a very long name for, for the name of your company. Now, since we're covering structure, let's see what, what's um, focus on the idea exactly. This is this is what I'm talking about. Yep. Now here. The first type, it's like when it's sole partnership, okay? So the simplest business structure, okay, now we're learning these vocabs. Sole partnership structure uh, for one hour only, 7.30 till 8.30. So simplest business structure are those formed by one person. Now, what are the, the advantages of running your business alone? Okay, let's see. I love this, um, this photo here. It's like you're having your business as like a boat. Now, this is you. Okay. Now, if you have, if you're working alone and if you have your business alone, you, you don't have um, a great liability on you. Okay. Tax would be less. Um you don't need bigger capital. Um, you can easily move to a bigger structure of a business. Uh, even registering your company um, and the government will take easier steps. Sorry. And 
the profits and everything and the revenues from it, it would go directly to you. You don't have to share it with others. So this is, um, let's try to focus again on the VCAPs that I'm mentioning here. Um, now, if you're having partnership, if you're having a partner with you, like two people are doing it. Now, you will have more difficulties Let's say it's not as easy as having your own business with comes with the way of like whatever you're earning, you have to divide it. Um, the, the, the procedure of, of registering is just like the solo. But when it comes to uh, if your partner decides to leave you, you need to look for another partner and that will take maybe a long time. Not just like you're having yourself and you can do whatever you like. Now, each partner pay tax. Okay, and, and the profits has to be divided. So it will be double work. Two drivers, yeah, two captains would sink the boat sometimes. Um, maybe if you have, now the positive side of it, if, if your partner decided to leave you and you get a new partner, maybe that new partner would get you new ideas and maybe new business and you will get more money. So it has... Every structure has its own positive and negative side. Now, these are here examples of um, like from the, like um, companies get from one person individual to multinational. Okay, so it starts from solo and gets to very global names. Okay, um, like Steve Jobs. Okay, my internet is not good. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, because I got a notification for that. Um, I think the most popular one is Steve Jobs. Okay, it gets very global. So all these brands here, all these companies, it belongs to basically one person or maximum two partners. So we're mentioning examples for you here. like Virgin Empire, it's very well known. Now for corporations, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with that, that we have two types. We're having the public traded company and the privately held company. Now the public traded is more like um, we're having bigger bigger business while for public in a privately held company, a limited group of private stock owners controls the company. So it's more limited. And one of the most important char characteristics of that, um, I'm getting a notification that my internet is not stable somehow. So I'm not clear. So basically, private, we're not exchanging, we're not exchanging or selling um, chairs. No, it's it's more private thing. Okay, it's disclosure um, policy. It's following that. Okay, and it depends on private funding. So you need to fund that. Now, publicly traded companies here, it's usually bigger, larger. Okay, and there is um, stock trading. Okay, good, good. Now, the characteristics of it, it's like issues securities through an initial public, public offering. So, okay, we're gonna give you securities. Um, you can sell them in the future, um, has greater access to financing. And the most important thing is that um, you can reduce control for initial owners. It's not like you're, you're controlling everything. Okay. Now, um, we're having like in, in, in UK, we're mentioning examples in other countries. So 60, uh, sorry, 56.5% of UK limited companies have employees that remaining are single member companies. Okay. Because they start saying, oh my God, I don't want to be an employee. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, now, now it's, it's clear, right? Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna 
try to go um, through what I've decided to talk about today quickly, and then I'll give you the mic so you can share your ideas with me. Um, if Zoom took me and throw me out, don't go, okay? I'll, I'll try to come back. I have two internet and I still have problem with the connection. Maybe like, I don't know, it's the first time logging in from Iraq, different country, something. Okay. Um, so the stuff we've been, we've been trying to um, focus on type of companies that we have, like um, private and public, small business, multinational, and all of these. Okay, um, so basically any private company, this is the structure of it in case like um, you don't know, okay, or maybe you, like you forgot. So for private companies, you need to have directors. You need to have people who are reporting, shareholders and management, financing, valuation, and you need to put into consideration the size, the number of the shareholders are limited. Okay, um, the, the financing also, like the, the type of the investments, the amount of it, all of this stuff. Okay, and the directors usually control. Okay, it's the opposite to the public um, companies. And now these are some names of very famous uh, private companies. I know everyone knows Rolex, right? and Ikea or Ikea, different pronunciations, okay? Because each letter stands for something. So that is why it's different uh, pronunciation, different places. While if you wanna go on public, now directors are absolutely opposite of the private. Um, they don't have to be the shareholders. They just can be managers. Okay, and uh, regarding the shareholders and the management here, um, there was a very clear boundary drawn between the role of these two. They're not together. So no conflict of interest should be because it's very huge and large business. And the number of the shareholders is unlimited. It can be as much as they like. Okay, now if you want to go on public, you need to put into consideration this stuff. You need to choose board of members, board members, board of members. Um, you need to inform the staff that, um, I'm sorry, we're, we're going public. There should be a vote also. The board meeting hold on a vote favor for changing the companies. Um, we call it either articles of incorporation or articles of association, and um, even when you're registering the company, you need to go to the, the company's register and change that. And you need to have a public announcement. Now, again, try to learn as many vocabs as you like. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not reading the chats right now, okay? Because I don't want to be confused. Now, this part is what I love the most, is that what is the difference between global and multinational companies? So basically... A global company, basically, what is it? You have the facilities in different countries, but it has like um, one or single corporate culture. It means one headquarter and the other facilities, other parts of the company in different countries. While on the other hand, multinational has facilities in different countries, but each functions in its own entity. They I know they're like connected to one headquarter, but each entity is um, managing their own business. So it's more independent. So that is the difference between, sorry, global and multinational. Global, it's one company, but in different countries. Multinational, no, it's going around, but each entity has its own, and let's say, responsibility, their own functions, their own role. Um, like, for example, Apple is an example of a global company. So the product is essentially the same, except for the language change. So it's multinational. It has different, uh, sorry, it's global. It has uh, different languages and they're working in different places. Um, 
On the other hand, McDonald's, for example, here, no. These are um, like, they go around different countries. And if you go to India, you will find that their food is customized to Indian people, Indian people. So it becomes more spicy. Um, it has like their style of food different than in UK and other countries. So they try to adapt that culture or adapt that place. And as you can see here, this is a great example for um, Nike. Okay, it has different in different countries and each entity is different than the other one. Like the headquarter is different. Um, the way of their marketing in that place is different. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to upload this for you on Moodle so you can read it in more detail if you're interested um, in getting this information. Now for franchises, I love it the most. I think it's the most common one. Um, why do I love it? You don't have to start your business from zero. So basically you're taking other uh, brand, other people work and reputation and name, and you just try to go with it. So basically I think you get more money from it. Um, there are different types of, of franchising. Um, it's like, firstly, the manufacturing, the product, okay, which is the supplier-dealer relationship. But like here, manufacturing is, is different. So we grant you retails and you go and, and disturb it. Uh, sorry, distribute it. So just like cars, for example, Toyota, I'm trying to come and, and, and have a deal with um, a local distributor and then he's going to uh, sell these cars. On the other hand, the product franchise, no, I'm, 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 I'm the supplier and you're the dealer. So I'm trying to give you, um, uh, like I'm the franchisee, um, uh, you are the franchisee and I'm the, um, I'm the franchisee and you're the franchisers. Okay. So I'm selling your products. Okay. I'm, I'm selling it directly. Now we're having the business format franchise here, the most common type this has very high input okay um it has the the brand name the trad uh, the trademark the trademark sorry they you even like getting training like i believe like dhl for example wherever they're going they're getting training through their staff so they keep the same level of their services now the franchisee buys um supplies from the franchiser we're learning three vocabs here and pays fees and royalties and everything. Now, fast food is a great example of that. Now, the top 10 are uh, McDonald's, KFC. Look, it's all food. Like Pizza Hut, okay, um, Subway. Okay, so these are top 10 uh, franchises. Now, for the not-for-profit, basically, uh, just like clubs and stuff, any money comes from selling your service. It doesn't go to your pocket. Like, it goes to people who are involved in it. And as you can see here, I have different types of it. Private foundation, cooperative. Um, I have the mutual things. I can see comments here. Yes, um, social enterprise, chamber of commerce, for example, okay, they're charging you money, but it goes back to their members. So here we're mentioning different examples. Okay, um, again, the structure of it should have a chairman, should have a board of directors, committees and administration staff. This is the, the structure of having such business. Now, the part that I love the most is this part. So these highlighted the most important vocabs that you need to know. Well, let's say definitions, what do we mean by stockholder? Uh, what do we mean by professional corporation, firm, limited liability partnership, 
platform corporation. So basically it covers everything that I dealt with in this lecture with their own um, definition, what we mean by it. Maybe some of them are in YouTube, maybe others uh, you're familiar with it. That would be great. Just try to um, teaching you them in English and the appropriate um, definition of it. Now that's all for me today regarding the most important thing. I'm very sorry about the horrible internet that I had. Um, I'm ready to take your comments, questions, and I will I will upload it for you. Yeah, I will share it with you on Moodle. So now it's your turn. Please, I am happy that you liked the topic. Um, now it's your turn to talk. So try please to raise your hand so I can hear you. We can exchange some information. If you wrote any question in the question and answer, I'm sorry, it's already deleted because um, I logged out and then I logged in. So basically um, it's erased. I saw some people were asking about, I don't know, um, the hours and stuff. Um, I can see a hand got raised here, Abdul Aziz. Yes, Abdul Aziz, you're allowed to be, to talk, please go ahead. Hi, you can unmute yourself. Abdul Aziz, do you hear me? Abdul Aziz. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, hi. Hello. Uh, doctor. Uh, yes. I have one question regarding yes. uh, res res uh, registration uh, to the to this course. Okay. Before we, I yeah, I didn't uh, add my information. So we don't have any information in our uh, website when we are enter just uh, to the courses. Okay. I, so we we, we don't have any ability to uh, go inside and is find. Is it English. only you? I is think it only I have. You? I don't know about uh, um, others. Our um, Okay, let me ask your um, colleagues here. Guys, did you try to log into Moodle and try to find out business um, English, it's written English business course, something training. Uh, the one that, uh, let me share it with you again. Through Moodle. Okay. Now, Abdulaziz, you need to check um, with the, what's they call it? SI something, <laughs> the tickets thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. I will send tickets for regarding this. Yes, yes, because basically this is how did we announce about this training. We didn't go public. We only sent yeah. tickets to, I don't know, try to send emails, messages, stuff through SIS, something. I don't have access to it, so I don't know it. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and you. then according to that, they registered. Okay, thank you. We are happy from the course and we need to continue. Uh, thank you, and uh, yes, really. Hello. Thank you, uh, doctor. Thank you very right. much. Bye. Um, Kamar, I, I don't know. Is this Kamaruddin or something? You're allowed to talk, Kamar. If you can, I think. I hope that I'm not mispronouncing it. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a man. Hi. <laughs> can you please tell me what's your name? My name is uh, Gamar ad uh, Okay, so yeah, I was pronouncing it correct. Okay. Hi, it's Gamar with G, right? Yes, Gamar, Gamar ad -Din. Gamar ad -Din. Okay, welcome. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, please. Oh, sorry, I, I just I want to know, uh, this course, uh, it will uh, add it to the final uh, uh, result of um, master degree or uh, it will be separate? I have no idea. You need to double check with the dean, actually. They told me, okay, you have a training course. You need to provide it to the student. I said, okay. Then the marks things and like how it's going to be counted later, I'm not sure about it. But I don't think you're going to have it in the final. Like it's not, it's not a topic that you're having it through the, through the semester. It's more a training thing with a certificate. Training. training. 
Yes, it's a training. Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, better, uh, I think uh, better to be um, a separate certificate. I think it will be. Yeah, this is this is the idea behind having a quiz after. Um, okay, here I'm getting the answer. It's not going to affect, it's not going to be in the final exam. It's not going to affect your scores, basically. So you're just going to have a certificate. It's just like any other trainings. Okay, so uh, other other things. Okay, uh, also I want to know about uh, this um, uh, quiz. Uh, duration started uh, when? Please uh, repeat. Yeah, it's a start as you can see here. I share it with you guys. Um, it starts at seven thirty. Okay, 730. which is which is in 7, ten minutes, nine minutes. After this uh, uh, lecture or uh, seven thirty yes. daily. No, 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 no. We have Mondays and Wednesdays. So when I close Zoom and the lecture ends, automatically yeah. the quiz is going to be opened for you for only one hour. Okay. Only this one is the hour. training. Yeah, only for one hour. Okay. It's a training. After it's one hour, we can't, we can't uh, do, no. uh, we can do uh, this uh, quiz. No, no. Okay, okay. I want yes. to know. This. Yeah. The, the the lectures are not um, obligatory. It's it's um, it's like up to you. If you're interested, I'm answering Dina. Um, you're welcome, Aberdi. Thank you. Um, so basically, it's it's not um, something obligatory. It's optional. If you like to enjoy it, welcome. There is no failing. We're not we're not scoring here. Okay, it's just a matter of proving your attendance is not going to affect your scores. Um, I have Mohammed Fakhir, I think. Yes, Mohammed. Thank uh, you, Dean. Hello, doctor. Hi, Mohammed. Uh, nice to join to your course. Thank I'm, you very much, welcome. Um, I want to ask it about the difference between um, global and uh, multinational. Um, yeah. I, I already have information about the global. I think uh, global um, center, centralizing, yes, centralizing mm -hmm. its uh, process in its, its own country. Uh, yes. And I think also it's uh, standardizing the products in its uh, own country and its own culture. Yes? Yes, definitely. Yes. And multinational, uh, uh, not like this different uh, mm. about this uh, definition yes yeah it's it's like they try to adapt that area as i told you for example mcdonald's and other like um type of fast food if you go to india it's different than when you go to saudi arabia and india you know they all eat spicy so they have to make that food spicy. So basically they're adapting that culture. It means they have their own entity is different. The style, the, the food is different than, so it's not centralized, just like you mentioned. It has yes. different standards um, according to the place, the culture they are serving in. Okay, so that's the whole difference. Multinational is more like independent. But yes. The global is really dependent on the central. Uh, thank, thanks, doctor. Uh, I have another uh, question. Um, all members here talking about your accent. Uh, your accent is very nice and uh, very you. clear. Yes, uh, I right. think uh, me and uh, all members uh, seek to make uh, our accent like you. Uh, you. You know, our accent is not. Uh, not good so uh, mm -hmm. I asked you for recommendation us I recommended me and all members uh, to improve our accent thank you okay you're very welcome thank you Mohammed for your comment so um, regarding that thing firstly um, I'm forced to have a, a semi how perfect accent so that's my student would uh, imitate me and having good English. It's it's not it's shame on me if I'm if I'm like not pronouncing the words correctly so that my students are learning wrong things. Now for you guys, you're not required to have any accents, any 
I don't know, any professionality in a pronunciation, as long as you can communicate. The main purpose of having any language is to communicate with the other person. Now, me and Muhammad, Muhammad was saying like, it's not like his accent. But since I understood you and we were able to communicate, we understood each other. Is that's the main reason of having a language. You're not a native English speaker. And my accent came from living and spending years with natives. Now you're in your country, it's really that you speak to English people or at least people who speak all the time English. You're not required to have English as long as you have the required vocabs and uh, I don't know, information and you can express yourself in appropriate way. No one is coming to criticize you. Oh my God, you're speaking Egyptian accent or Saudi ac accent. Because on the other hand, when we hear anyone speak it like, like let's say for example, American people who speaks Arabic in a very bad way, we were like, oh my God, you know how to speak Arabic. We're like feeling very proud that this person knows how to speak Arabic with the horrible way. So why we like, we should worry about our accent when we speak English. You don't need to, to, to put a lot of effort, I don't know, worried about it, as long as you need to learn new vocabs, try to think in English, not in Arabic, so you have more fluency, okay? You don't have to have appropriate way of pronouncing it, as long as you're communicating. That's the main reason for, um, having a language. The slides um, are already going to be uploaded on Moodle. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, yeah, it ends by people were not here, I think. So I'm gonna reshare it. Okay, it's gonna start in three minutes, the quiz, by the way. So here you can, I don't know, screen it. Take a screenshot of it. Um, it's end by 3rd of August. The questions are multiple choice and true and false. You already create a chat group, okay. Yeah, the duration is one hour, but the moment that you click start, you have 10 minutes to do the quiz only, which is four questions. Okay, um, did you take a screenshot of it? It's about what I just explained for you in the lecture. <clears throat> I will upload it now when we uh, finish the Zoom meeting. I just talked about the quiz. I said the quiz is a matter of proving your attendance. It doesn't have marks. You're not going to get marks. We just need to make sure that we give the certificate for people who are really attending the online and the uh, and doing the quiz. Because, for example, I have 300 people registered for this training course, and the attendance right now, I can see only 100. So basically 200 registered for it, but they're not attending. So it's not fair that we give the certificates for people who are really like attending all the time and others are not. Um, that's not fair. Um, matter of registering in the course, it doesn't mean like you're guaranteed going to get the certificate. Yes, Asif. Any more, um, any more questions, comments or something? The, the quiz is going to be open now and you have till 8.30. <clears throat> you have till 8.30. Of course, if you want to improve your English, you need to practice it, not just listen to them. You need to practice it also. Great. Okay. We will, um, I am expecting to have more uh, people talking uh, during the next lectures, please. Okay. We want you to, I don't know, listen to you. Okay. We break that wall. Oh my God. I, like my English is not good. I can't speak. Thank you, Khalid, for you guys for attending. Okay. Then if you don't have any more questions, I think that's it for me. 
Um, the, the quiz is going to be open now. I'm going to upload the, the, uh, the slide that I just showed to you. So um, I'm going to meet you next Wednesday, which is in two days, not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Um, so I'll meet you on Wednesday at the same time as 6.30, okay? Until that time, bye-bye and take care.